Welcome back, Phyllis. The revamped Wilderness boss arc continues as we try to obtain all the new Wildy weapon drops. We did complete the Void Waker recently and figured out where to best use it. If you missed that video, the link will be on the top right. We also got Vigorous Mace upgrade and the Thamoran Scepter upgrade called the Skull Vedion. Using the Skull Vedion on the Scepter turns it into the Accursed Scepter, which is a stronger version of Thamorans with a really cool special. The Accursed Scepter in particular is interesting because of the special called Condemn. The Scepter also underwent a dramatic rework recently, making it way better than it used to be. Many players do not know this weapon's true potential, so in today's video, alongside our normal progress with some pretty insane rare drops, I will be testing the Accursed Scepter to find out how good it really is and figure out where it is best in slot beyond just the wilderness. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe as I got some secret grinds to reveal coming up and interesting testing videos too. As usual, we have to cover the basics for our newbie friends first before we go into the more nuanced aspects of Lay Scepter. So both the Danron and Curse Scepter has the power staff ability and the speed like the Trident or Sang Staff so it can fire off his own attack using just Ether without any runes. But it can also auto-cast spells too, like Ancients or Regulars if you swap to the auto-cast mode. Anyways, let's get into the more interesting aspects of the staff. Its basic Trident-like attack doesn't hit as high as the Trident outside of the Wilderness, but it is still decent on its own. The main use of the weapon, however, outside of the Wilderness is going to be the special attack Condemn. So the special attack of this scepter is super interesting as it has a 50% accuracy and damage boost using only 50% special which upon landing will drain the opponent's magic and defense by 15%. One thing to note is that this special can only affect the target once so you cannot stack the effect. This special has many potential applications with bossing because magic has become more and more relevant as a means to kill some bosses especially if you have the Tumakin Shadow. Also, I have to explain a bit on how stats in this game works to fully appreciate what the Accursed Scepter special can do. So the defense stat really only covers range and melee attacks, so which stat covers magic defense? That would be magic level. Magic level in this game covers not only magic offense, but also a big chunk of magic defense. This means that if you land a Warhammer on Bandos, it will barely affect Bandos' magic defense. See where I'm getting at? So the Scepter can lower magic defense by a significant amount, which means if you were maging a boss, there's a good chance that the Accursed Scepter special can speed up your kills using magic. The Scepter also lowers defense by 15%, which means that it's got some crazy unexpected uses that might blow you away beyond just maging. Not to mention that there aren't too many magic special attack weapons out there that's useful outside of the Nightmare Volatile and Eldritch Staffs, which for many players are too expensive or too hard to get. The Accursed Scepter spec is also very high hitting and accurate as well, so it's also a really strong DPS magic special. So, generally speaking, outside of the wilderness, if you are maging a boss where you miss a noticeable amount, let's say Bandos or Zora melee form, then the Accursed Scepter will be a good special attack option for you. The more experienced viewers might be asking though, how does the Scepter compare to the Eldritch and Volatile for general PVM spec wise? Honestly, I'd say Scepter is overall the most useful magic spec, maybe tied with Eldritch, especially if prayer isn't an issue. Faster kills using Scepter tends to mean less prayer use anyways. Volatile is probably overall the least useful for PVM from my experience since prayer gain or stat reduction is often more useful. So I still want to talk a bit about the wilderness in my testing as I have plans to do some Wildy Slayer for fun and collection lock stuff really soon. I did try out the Scepter as Scorpio using the Trine style and holy shit it was dumb broken. Sometimes I could just kill the boss without needing to freeze the minions. I was on task and I didn't really have a good strategy to do Scorpia as I'm a young grasshopper there. Even so I still got easily over 60 kills an hour. I'm sure it's easily 70 or more with an actually good freezing strategy that I didn't have. Yeah, if it's just one healer healing it, it's not that bad. Oh, I got Odium Shard 3. Oh my god, let's go. Collection Log Slot. A... I already have gone Odium a long time ago, but that is very cool. 
All right, to kill it fast, we're going to use the spec so we can try to skip the healers if possible. There we go. Uh, helps a lot. I mean, if you can skip the healers, save a lot of time. Look at that. 16 second kill. Oh, wow. That's really good. Look at that. I can stop them from healing, I guess. Ooh, maybe I'm onto something, boys. I got a task of 65, and I basically did it in an hour, so... And I also did some Crystallia tasks where you typically mob a lot of those tasks with Ancients and the Scepter boost was disgusting there. A lot of these Wildy Barrage tasks go by record speed. Oh, Lern's Keys are ready? Let's go. Alright, so with the Scepter, it's floating around 60... High 60Ks an hour in the Wilderness. I'm sure with a Cannon, it's probably astronomically more... Oh, 55 max. I just saw it. So on task and using the scepter, ice brush, it's uh, around 55. If you bring riskier gear, potentially you can hit like 60s, I imagine. That's like uh, probably almost 10 max hits higher than what I normally would have. So I can definitely get hooked on this because on top of the collection lock stuff, you get so many other extra things like those blighted sacks that contain built-in spells for wilderness. So like the blighted ice sacks for ice barraging vengeance sacks too those are really good for anti-pking so i'm gonna love stacking those up so wilderness slayer was actually really fun with the scepter so i'm definitely gonna do more of that in the future maybe uh, try to get 100 keys or something and see if i can get some nice collection log slots along the way so look forward to that i will go into detail now which bosses i found to be definitely worth bringing the scepter there's going to be two category of bosses that the scepter will work really well on the first group of bosses are bosses where you normally use magic to kill them, or it is viable to use something like a Trina or a Sank to kill them, like Zora or Bandos. The second group of bosses are bosses where you only use magic to kill the boss if it is with the Tumikin Shadow like Abyssal Sire or Kelfi Queen and pairs well with the Scepter. So we will start off with bosses where I found the Accursed Scepter to be absolutely amazing, just maging without the need of Tumikin Shadow. So the first boss I want to talk about is Zora. Probably my favorite use of the Scepter overall as Zora. It is absolutely amazing there. It feels like it was made specifically for this boss. The Scepter special has no trouble landing at the start of the phase as it is green phase and weak to magic. Dealing good damage and lowering its magic and defense. This is amazing because if you are doing the hybrid method, not only is your magic damage output noticeably better, but also your range output is better too. For example, my magic attacks definitely had an easier time landing on the melee form of Zora, and my blowpipe was noticeably more accurate on the blue face too. That's what it feels like. Oh, surface edge! Yay! Yeah, it's crazy. I don't think I've missed a single time with the Damron Scepter spec. 15 kills, yeah, I've landed 15 kills in a row. I'm pretty sure my average times definitely were not this fast. It was probably closer to like 1 minute and 20 or something. But disclaimer, I definitely didn't have a Saturate Heart then either, and I do have that now. But honestly though, it's not just because of the Saturate Heart, it's definitely because of the Scepter, because the Blowpipe, like I said, is gnarly as Zora. If you aren't using the Shadow and you're using something like Sang and Trident, I'm sure you will notice the impact of the Scepter even more as you are definitely going to be more splashy and the Scepter will definitely help alleviate some of that. Dude, Blowpipe, so good. Oh my goodness. It is absolutely amazing how good the Blowpipe is when you land that Scepter spec. Wow, it feels like the pre-nerf Blowpipe if not better basically holy shit that was so fast i i think i just pb to be honest holy shit pb'd in uh, just 25 kills <laughs> and i've seen so many under one minute kills and actually under 50 kills as well i tied my original pb multiple times which was 47 without even sweating anyways we did it boys uh first hour of zora back in a long time so we got 37 kills an hour it's actually insane huge improvement from my previous oh shit this is a pb for sure look at this this is a few seconds pb 100 44 seconds <laughs> 
Lol, I went from 47 like many, many times in the last hour and a half to 44 seconds. Yeah, I forgot the Accursed Scepter was 4 ticks though, so that's actually really perfect. Really simple start, you just use the Accursed Scepter once. So I typically just do one spec per kill as I only reset my stats every two kills. But depending on how you do Zora, you could probably use other specs as well. And especially because you will land probably on your first try. Something like Bulb Plyber Volatile combo is cool if you're doing one kill resets. What the hell? Look at how fast I just killed that guy. And the most random- Oh! Oh my god! Magma Mutagen! Oh my god! What? Holy shit. Holy- Oh my god, dude. Testing these items have been nothing short of amazing because... What? Holy shit. I actually got both mutagens now. Oh, there it is. The hour is done. So 38.7 kills an hour. Wow. With dragon darts can definitely theoretically go higher. But for me, I did put in quite a bit of effort. And uh, this is what I managed. So actually insane. Actually insane. I was probably getting like thir low 30s before. It was meant to be because before I got the mutagen today, I got a sword palm while testing the Curse Scepter. So it's like, you know, perfect. It's just meant to be. Yay. And I don't lose any bank space. So that's super cool. I've never won this before in my life. So I guess YouTube comments, Twitch comments. Which one do you prefer? I mean, I got this first, so I probably like this more. But uh, by itself, you know, I think blue's better, but... I think this look, looks better with uh, melee gear. These used to be like the party hats of uh, our times. Huh, so, Oh, I forgot to mention, I do need to reobtain the jar from Zora since I got mine pre-log. But if I get it, then Zora collection log is completed. We're gonna rock the scepter at Muspa now. So the only difference with this old setup is that I bin the Twisted Buckler because I feel like I don't really use it much, honestly. Next is Phantom Muspa. It's a bit of a new boss, but it is basically like a profit boss like Zora or Vorkath. It is very similar idea to Zora in terms of how you use the scepter as you typically use both range and magic on this boss. So Phantom Muspa has a green form that's weak to range and a brown form that's weak to magic. The idea is to use the special of the scepter on the first brown form you encounter. Sometimes you don't get the brown form at the start, so you have to wait till it changes after 100 HP damage. I do not recommend using the Scepter spec on the green form because it is Splash City. But on the brown form, I landed most of my specs. With best in slot gear, the best spec combo I found was Scepter spec at the start into CZB spec. During the Soul Split phase with Light Bear and Death Charge, you can keep using that spec combo every kill pretty much. It's definitely noticeable when you land a spec, especially when you use the wrong style as it transitions to a different form. You will land more of those transition hits and in general. The Scepter would do wonders for people that don't have a shout as the accuracy boost is a bigger deal with Trines or Sangs like I mentioned at Zora. For those of you that have much lesser expensive gear like no Zara crossbow, you can honestly just spam Scepter specs for DPS. And there's also a good chance you might miss your first spec at the kill start so you can just land it twice for that reason as well it's pretty damn versatile guys yeah we're 22 kills an hour so that's nice the kills are really consistent though they've been always like two minutes around there so all right so that's the strat ccb once at the end first scepter at the start oh ancient brute gives freaking uh prayer back i didn't even know Forgot about that. We're using it. I mean, it only drains the melee stats, so it doesn't matter. And occasionally drops restores too, so I can get those stats back. Alright, guys. We did an hour. Yep. And I got so much food when I'm already done. Thank you very much. Anyways, pretty good. 22 kills an hour. After warming up a little bit to remember how to do this boss. That was a lot of kills, considering I had to bank like three times with only food drops towards the very end so i'd say the scepter definitely is worth bringing here next is more of an in-between use for the scepter because i want to talk about rage 3 where it is a great party support spec weapon even if you don't have a shadow and a great assist with a shadow 
So the Scepter is pretty good at Akka and Wardens. Uh, it's good on Pillar Phase of Wardens and also Phase 3 of Wardens. The Scepter has no problem landing on either of those bosses. Akka is a bit trickier though because it resets its stats after every teleport. I typically found it to be worth using at the beginning, no matter what, since it's weak to magic at the start. Especially if you butterfly Akka with the shadow because butterflying delays the boss's ability to teleport and it'll stall it for maximum time. And you will get a lot of mileage off the spec if you butterfly. Eventually though, Akka will teleport no matter what and then its stats will reset. You do have the option to spec it again if you feel confident on setting up another butterfly. But if not, it's okay because you might need to save your spec for the last phase of Akka for like a carrot special. But I definitely use it at the beginning. Nice. Okay, that was really fast. Holy shit. 4 435, that's really fast. The Scepter is also really good at Warden. Phase 1 and Phase 3. Because even if you don't have a Shadow, it's easy to land the spec. And it lowers also defense. Don't forget about that. And magic by 15%. So it still helps you. Even if your best DPS is range of Warden. It will also help your teammates as well do more damage regardless of their style. Whether they're ranging or maging, they'll definitely hit more often on the Obelisk and on Phase 3 Warden. This item is amazing in parties at TOA, even if you don't have a Shadow. But if you do have a Shadow though, then the Scepter just makes the Shadow even better on Phase 1 and Phase 3. So you can start off with one spec on the obelisk, hope it lands, it probably will. You can also land it at the start of Phase 3 Warden and also at the start of Enrage Phase 3 Warden as well. Yeah, that's a good time though. That's a good time. Nice. Definitely Scepter was speeding up the fight quite a bit there. So that was nice. Okay, let's move on to bosses where it is worth maging the boss if you have a Tumic in Shadow. The next boss... So I do want to reiterate that this only makes sense because the shadow is OP as hell, meaning you can mage this boss, whereas it normally wouldn't be a good idea. Really straightforward here, guys. You just need to scepter spec at the start of the kill, and you will most likely land it, especially if you're on task. If you do miss, you should have a backup spec to try again, and you'll most likely land the second one. I also recommend freezing melee minions and walking under the boss between hits, as it will massively reduce damage so that you can focus on just killing the boss without worrying about eating. You can just replay the part to see how full kill is done in this video, if you're not sure. Arma boss is definitely quicker to kill with the scepter spec on the boss, and my kill times overall definitely went down a bit, even factoring in the saturated heart, it's definitely additionally faster because of the scepter. I also recommend just camping light bearer to make the most out of the scepter specs, as you do splash a decent amount, so having that extra spec is nice every kill. Oh, I died. Oh my god, it died already. <laughs> okay, well. Yeah, landing that scepter actually is really uh, noticeable here, though. I gotta say, holy. Thank you. <gasps> Ooh, armored old chain skirt. Nice. That's a good drop. God, yeah. That magic spec reduction is really good. Yeah, look at, look at these kill times, though. It's crazy. 38, uh, 34, 39, uh... 47 37 what's the other one 31 36 41 like holy shit these kill times are actually disgusting and yep it just makes hitting the boss a bit easier oh my god did i just like three shot the boss no i didn't i i, I didn't just do that <laughs> Holy shit, 16 seconds. What the hell? 60 armor deal bosses in one trip. That's the entire task of one go. And look look at this. I brought uh, six prayer pots, two restorers, and I still have three overall prayer pots left. So it's definitely, uh, I think the scepter definitely helped. But honestly, though, uh, the saturated heart made a massive difference. Maybe even more than the scepter. Since it's constantly a boost, right? It's a 24-7 boost. Scepter can miss, right? Like 40% of the time from my experience so far. But when that Scepter lands, though, the kills definitely are overall faster. So yeah, I would definitely keep bringing the Scepter. Like 26.3 kills an hour is really good for me. 
Definitely the fastest I've ever done at uh, Armadillo, so I approve. Next boss is Sarah Boss or Kalimindor Siliana. Shadow absolutely melts Sarah. I'm not even on task, and it dies faster than Armadillo on task. But Scepter does work here as well. Simply spec at the start, and it will miss like half the time though, so I do recommend the Lightbearer Ring again to store a backup spec between spawns. The Scepter helps a little bit here, not as much as other bosses I've shown in this video, but it does make kills more consistently quick. Prayer shouldn't really be an issue since she drops a lot of prayer, so Scepter specs are probably more useful than Eldritch here, and plus you're killing it faster, so you shouldn't need prayer as much. Anyways, quick note about the other two goblins bosses, you definitely can't apply the Scepter spec the same way you can at Armadillo and Sarah. Particularly if you are using just a trident or a saying to do bandos magic, the scepter spec will definitely help a lot on that. But if you are just shouting the other two bosses, it'll help a little bit as well using the scepter. Nice. Wow, that was that was good. There we go, another really good kill. Alright, we did an hour of Sarah. It was honestly super easy and not because of the scepter, really, just because of the shadow as being just so OP, you know. We ended up doing 27 kills an hour. Uh, average kill time was probably like 50, 40, 40, 50 seconds. I did notice when I landed with the Accursed Scepter, it probably saved me one extra hit per kill. So that's like a few seconds saved per kill. But yeah, I only landed half the time though. Like my hit rate with the Scepter spec at Sarah was only 50%. Next boss is the Kelphite Queen. The shadow is absolutely busted at Kelphite Queen, as you can melt both forms with shadow and with the scepter spec on task, or not on task, it makes the boss fight even faster. You will notice the range phase is a bit easier to hit with the scepter. You will usually land this spec most of the time, so that's nice. And if you do the POH method using the Desert Elite Diaries, you get two specs anyway, so it's almost going to land at least once per kill. Definitely helped improve my kill times and set my new personal best with the shadow only. And the advantage of shadow only Kelphi Queen is that you have space for so much food and you can bring like brawls, vengeance, spellbook swap to do additional damage with way less space and way less equip switching. Alright, let's try one more spec. Nice. 23 kills. I've only splashed both specs once. So that's like really good. Yeah, the Scepter spec, thank goodness, is super accurate. Oh my god, I just got triple stacked. I don't know if you saw that, saw that but that was insane. Alright, an hour KQ done with the latest setup, a Cursed Scepter, and of course, not to mention the Saturated Heart. Definitely, again, Saturated Heart improved the method on its own, since it's a constant improvement. Constant damage buff. But yeah, we managed to get almost 31 kills an hour. It would have been 31, but... I had to teleport in one of the kills but yeah on my first try back it was basically uh over 30 kills an hour which is a pb for me next is the abyssal sire the shadow is busted as sire as you can mage the entire fight including the respiratory phase too pretty straightforward just land your scepter spec at the start again using light bear which i recommend you will usually have two spec chances per kill but you usually only need to land your first one so sometimes if you want to be fancy you can also bring an eldritch for extra prayer but you probably don't need it because sire drops a quite a lot of prayer if you are not sure how using the shadow works at sire then just replay this fight from the video to get an idea it is fairly straightforward the tricky part though is handling minions on the last phase as you have paper defense so if you are not doing it properly you can definitely get melted by the minions I just recommend moving away from the minions though and using Blood Barrage to heal back up on the central clump of the minions. If you know Sire is about to die as the Shadow Cast is being fired towards the boss, you can use Blood Barrage and heal as that hit is about to kill the boss to get back to 4 HP, as shown in the video. Scepter works wonders at Sire improving kill times quite a bit. So you might be asking, what about Thermi boss? A lot of people shadow Thermi, but don't bring the Scepter there because Thermi's magic level is actually like stupidly low that it won't really drain anything and it's magic special defense is high but you can't drain that one so it wouldn't matter it's been like 20 minutes and we're at basically 31.6 so free heal you can do a phantom heal because it takes so long for the shadow to actually hit the freaking uh, respiratory system okay we have done an hour 
first hour back in a long time and what the hell is this we basically reached 32 kills an hour probably could go higher i definitely made some mistakes i uh later found some things to like make the kills a little faster but holy shit if you're gonna shout sire definitely get the scepter man out of all the places where i thought the scepter had potential only one of them was probably not worth it and that was that corporal beast unfortunately the scepter doesn't drain the corpse magic max hit only is magic defense and physical defense so it did not help me out as much as i thought i ended up getting slightly slower kills overall because the extra time spent specking with the scepter didn't save more time from the actual fight and i'm honestly not certain if the scepter specs magic reduction really lowers anything other than magic defense because when i fought the boss after specking it i thought it was gonna lower his magic accuracy or damage but it didn't really seem to do anything on the, its magic offensive so yeah there seems to be almost no use for the scepter at corp unfortunately overall the scepter has been such a pleasant surprise i was more shocked at how good it is than the void waker to be fair, I already guessed that the Void Waker would be a good spec weapon because it's based off the original Karasi sword in RuneScape 3. But this weapon was hella sketchy and new and had no idea if it was good or not. But certainly it is really good in the right situations as we found out. You will definitely see me using this weapon in future grinds. It is absolutely certified. Rice Cup Seal of Approval. As usual, here is some of the behind the scenes progress while I was testing out all these weapons mostly collection log related stuff but next video though is going to be big big progress on a particular grind that i've been doing behind the scenes you guys will definitely like it but yeah i mean we definitely got the mutagen mid test so that was really cool progress i'd say but yeah enjoy the rest oh my god yes i just got so lucky back to back of the same step holy yes that's why you always do the worst three step last i guess Damn, 80k versus 112k. It's looking spicy. Medium clue. Oh, new item. Let's go. We got a headband. Yay. My FK of choice lately has mostly been Redwoods because it complements clue scrolls really well. And I'm loving the clues for the collection lock slot. But yeah, here's 45 mil woodcutting. Still no woodcutting pet. What XP will I get it, guys? Leave in the comment. I was doing some chambers with a really good friend of mine and... I decided to test out the Void Waker there just because why not, but I quickly realized that there's just so many bosses that are resistant to magic. Basically like half damage or something like that. You just get a damage penalty. So Tecton, I could only hit land like a very small amount of damage. Same with the Fossa Crystals, I was only able to land like half damage with the Void Waker spec. So yeah, I wouldn't recommend bringing it here. Dragon Claw is definitely better. At least it can do full damage on like everything.